Guys, it's Guild Spire here, and welcome back to Champions of the Fog. You are here with me today, just me, myself, and I, with Cerebral Assassins versus Luxury. We are here with call fire number five in round number one, this time on the Torment Creek. It will be quite exciting to say the least. And we're going to be starting off strong with the running man here, killing for the Cerebral Assassins. So it should be interesting to see what they bring today. So far in round number one, we've seen a lot of plague. So I would not doubt seeing the plague again here on the Torment Creek. And next round will be following the winner of this match over to the Wrecker's Yard. Yet to be determined whether or not we are going to be doing three or four rounds. So definitely make sure to stick on by as we're going to be going right into the next match as soon as we can. So it's going to be a good old long day of some dead by daylight. And with that being said, we'll be getting started here in just a moment. And we'll be able to see the power of the killers at the disposal today to actually give you a quick rundown of what this looks like. We are going to have a choice of the Demogorgon, the Executioner, and the Plague. Honestly, in my opinion, a pretty good uh, pool of killers to choose from, especially Demogorgon as they are allowed the Lichen. Uh, followed by with Wrecker's Yard, the Cenobite, the Deathslinger, and the Huntress, which the Huntress previously had about a 100% pick rate on the Wrecker's Yard, but we've been seeing some Deathslingers, some Cenobites now, which has been interesting. Not sure if the results have been any better in comparison, but still very interesting nonetheless. And if we do get to our fourth round today, I know I'm skipping over round number three, but I'm excited for round number four, if at all possible, with seeing the Wrath with the Blight and the Spirit. Normally, the Nurse would be thrown in there as well. However, uh, you know, uh, Nurse be a bugging out, to say the least. But with that being said, we are good to go, and we'll be loading into this match in just one second. All right, all right. I am very excited for this. It's always good to see some top tier Dead by Daylight competitive play. And we are loading in as we speak. And we'll have to wait and see what Running Man decides to bring. Like I said, Plague has been a favorite so far. I'm actually trying to think of round ones that have not been Plague or Plague Mirrors. I think maybe we've seen one or two Executioners. But for the most part, it has definitely been a whole lot of Zavami Mami. So I'll we'll have to wait and see. Personally, I'm really surprised not to see Demogorgon. I think Demogorgon would be a huge pick here with the Lichen and be able to just get all of that Aurene. We saw that even in the late stages of Season 2 of COTF. Uh, and also, for all of you who are new to COTF and are wondering what we're actually doing today, uh, this is qualifiers for Season 3. There are enough teams that were interested that we are having to do qualifiers. And uh, this is number 5 out of 7, so including today, there's only 3 qualifiers left. But we are jumping right on in, and we see Running Man with the Vami Mommy. And take a look at their add-ons real quick. Pretty bog standard. We see the yellow apple as well as the tablet. So one extra pool at start as well as some extra time on the Corrupt Purge. And an amazing find here by Running Man. Finding both the Ace and a Survivor trying to stealth it out. And they are able to find the Zarina and get them broken at the window. Running Man trying desperately to get that hit before she's able to vault but not able to make it happen. It is, uh... It is a interesting time here, to say the least, for these survivors, where they are now aware that Thanatophobia is alive and well. We also did see two totems while we're kind of looking around here, so that would suggest a Ruin Undying more likely than not. It would be surprising for it to be anything else. However, looks like one of them has since expired. 
And so that'll be one less totem available for Running Man and the Plague. The yeah, trend there for the pallet's done. Unfortunately, not able to make it happen in time with Running Man getting hit through the pallet. And Nia now infected and injured. Running Man is finding himself in a pretty good spot, to say the least. Looks like Nia's trying to keep the tension of the plague, but looks like Running Man's just going to take their time, keep them broken. And honestly, with what we see there and Ruin still activated, a pretty good choice that these survivors are going to be slowed down by a 10% repair penalty. And Mech trying to hold that corner there to see the mind games, but unfortunately it seems that they may have mind gamed themselves. And Running Man going for the kill here with their Corrupt Purge now in hand. And with that tablet, I believe they have a full 90 seconds to work with. And we do see that Corrupt Intervention has now ended. First Gen has popped, however. And we're going to have to wait and see if these survivors are going to be able to apply any real pressure to Running Man and the Plague. Well, good news for these survivors, at the very least, Ruin has since expired, so there is no more gen regression, and we are looking at a one-perk plague here with the Natophobia. So we'll have to see if an instance that is going to make a difference as Rayman is on the prowl for some downs. This, however, do you want to keep in mind, will be their first down of the game if they do get it a dead hard. But unfortunately, Running Man being privy to that idea does go for the full charge and will be able to get the down and secure their first hook. I mean, all things considered here, we're looking at one gen to one hook. I mean, it definitely took a while. Running Man thinking there about doing a little bit of infection play on that gen. But unfortunately, they still have a little bit more time of their Corrupt Purge. And will have to go for the Dry Kick instead. And there's the infection. They thought about going for the Corrupt there. And now they do have a second pool with Nia Cleansing. And looks like Running Man might try and force the second stage here on Corn, But they're looking to go actually go off and maybe try and keep a 3-gen here. We do see this little tight group of gens. Though not the tightest in the world. We kind of see that one in the back area with their corrupt. This one here with some progress already. Though with the hook being in between them all, it's definitely not a bad play to say the least. And Rayman Man just continuing to uh, keep that gen infected, pressing towards second stage. And with only five seconds to go, looks like Meg will indeed go to second stage after all. Rayman Man now going over to this gen, doing a quick check, and they do indeed find some scratch marks. But not able to catch up to the survivor in time. And we'll get a quick infection on that gen just to deter the survivors from doing much of anything. So question is now, what will the survivors do? There is only around 30 seconds left until the survivor on hook does die. And that puts Running Man into a pretty good position if they're able to get another survivor down. With their Corrupt Purge, it really does put these survivors at a disadvantage as going for an on hook could result in a double down if the one of BT is not there. And even if that's the case, they can still get down pretty quickly with or without that borrowed time. Though these survivors, understanding that, will go for some extra generators at the very least to keep the pressure going on Running Man as they do get their first kill of the game on Lux Corn. Running Man once again going over to this generator, seeing if there's any progress on it. And sure enough, there is some mild progress. Normally, Dry Kicking wouldn't be a good option here, but with Natophobia slowing down the game by right now only 5%. It's not the worst thing in the world. However, if an instance that these survivors are able to break up that 3 gen and 99 the 1 on the side, I would say Running Man is going to be in a world of hurt to say the least. But looks like that will not be happening here. And we have what I would say is a 2-1 split. I think it would be a bit generous saying that this is a 3 gen for Running Man here. But we do see Nia get broken from the infection. And these fires definitely respecting the terrorists of the plague as they 
dipped out of that area and looks like we find the ace going for the back corner. And Running Man, how to make a decision here whether or not they're going to commit or not. And looks like they are. They're going to go for the full commitment here and try and get the down with the Corrupt Purge, but just not able to get the hits around the corners. And Ace with a beautiful dodge there on the vault. Running Man opting to go for the M1 instead and will get the hit, but losing a lot of distance there in this chase. This could spell disaster for Running Man if Ace does have any adrenaline and last gen does get completed, but we'll have to wait and see as this pallet beam down here is going to cost Running Man a lot of distance and in fact even make this entire chase a potential infinite. Unfortunately though, Ace did mess up and will get down by the Corrupt Purge. Running Man going for the break now to try and reduce the value of this loop and will get their second hook, at the very least confirming a 2k if the survivors are not able to get the unhook. Realistic speaking, a 2k 6 hook, definitely not a bad score to post for the first match of the day. However, of course, Team Luxury will have the option to retaliate with a plague of their own where they will know the exact amount of points that they need and looks like this will indeed be a 2k after all as we hear the door open and I imagine we'll see two survivors escaping here in just a moment unless there is an unless here unless we see the Nia come in. There is a real possibility the ace does have a bit of time on hook, but no, the survivors will take the safer chance and they will get the two man out, giving Running Man the 2k for the first match of the day. And we are going to be here in just a moment, once again, on the Torment Creek with Luxury as the killer this time around. So looking at the builds here, we do see a Corrupt Invention, Ruin, Undyne, Thanatophobia. And I'm kind of interested to see what the survivors ended up bringing. They played it pretty safe, pretty bog standard given the circumstances, not knowing if it's going to be a plague or not, not seeing any renewals or any healing type perks outside of the will make it. So it makes a ton of sense. Unfortunate though that Deliverance never actually got activated that entire match as we did not see a unhook. Uh, through and through, it was a full uh, camp to death both times. So, good stuff all around. And uh, we'll be moving on to the second match here in just a moment. But with that being said, guys, I do want to remind you all that we do have some cool stuff going on here on Champion of Fog. First off, we do have a partnership going on with... Stream for a Cause. For those of you who do not know Stream for a Cause, they are a nonprofit organization supporting a whole litany of different causes. Whether that be what's going on in Texas, the war in Ukraine, and so much more. So definitely make sure to check out Stream for a Cause if you guys haven't already. Make sure to check out Champions for a Cause, which is our fundraiser paired with champ, uh, Stream for a Cause. You can find that link in chat right now here right now for those interested and every dollar counts so it would be really appreciated if you guys could donate even one dollar in order to you know support the charity in some way shape or form as this partnership will actually impact our champions of the champions in december for those who will be participating can't tell you what the prize pool will be just yet but i can say your donations in some way shape or form do influence what that will be. But with that being said, guys, we are going to take a quick break as we are going to get these teams set up with their builds. So stick with us as we are going to be running a three-minute ad break. For those who are not aware, we don't have a sponsor here on Champs of the Fog. If you guys know of one who might be willing to do so, definitely make sure to hit me up over on Discord. Otherwise, all of your support via ads, subscriptions, and other forms of uh, charitable donations or tips to us really do go a long way. So with that being said, we will be back in just a moment with match number two of round one.
All right, and we are back. We are just about set up with match number two of round number one with Cerebral Assassins versus Luxury. Right now, Luxury in a slight lead, 16 to 12. So, Cerebral Assassins is going to have to, at the very least, get a three-man out here. I should know. Sorry, correction. Luxury here. Actually... Yeah, Luxury is currently up 16. Hold on one second. Let me make sure that uh, these numbers look right. As I'm trying to think here, who should be winning and who should be not? And I'm kind of curious now as, hold on one moment. Do we have the points right? We do. We do have the points right as, yeah, that was going to be 10 points for all generators and 6 points for the two fresh escapes and only 6 points apiece for the kills. So yeah, Cerebral Assassins here on Survivor is going to have to probably get at least a 3-man out, or at least a 2-man out with probably... No, yeah, probably 3-man out. 3-man out's probably going to be the case here. I think it'll need to be a 3-man out with probably at most 2 hooks on one Survivor in order to get the win. It's going to be a close match to say the least, and both teams know what they need to do to win. So it should be exciting to say the least to see what Super Bowl Assassin's game plan is. But with that being said... I do believe we are about set and ready to go. And we saw Volume Mommy again on Torment Creek from Super Assassins and Running Man. This time we have Varsity from Luxury. I'm curious if we're going to once again see a good old plague once more. As she seems to be the prime pick. For all of round one, I would actually have to double check and see what the pick rate is, but I want to say it is almost 100%. But that being said, we are good to go and we'll be jumping on in to round number one, match two, Cerebral Assassins versus Luxury. Once again, Luxury this time as the killer on the Torment Creek. And after this, we'll be following the winner of this match into round number two on the Wrecker's Yard, where we have seen the Huntress Superiority reign supreme on the map known as Wrecker's Yard. And uh, we are loaded in as we speak. And like I said earlier, Super Assassin's here going to be having to go for a three-man out, it would seem, as they are going to be looking to get the W. A two-man out would result in a draw, so Luxury, at the very least, is going to be going for a 2K, and I'd say a 2K7 hook. If they can secure a 2K7 hook, that will get them the win by three points. If they aren't able to get the 2K7 hook or a 2K6 hook, which, I mean, I guess that's kind of impossible to not get a 2K6 hook. Point being, though, if they aren't able to secure the 2K, it will be over for Luxury, and they'll receive a loss from round number one. And we'll move into round number two, trying to get a, at very least, X and one record. For those not knowing how the qualifiers work, your goal is to either go X and zero, meaning go undefeated and receive your invite to season three, or to get two X and one records, which then also earns you an invite. But that being said, we are loading right on in. And it is a another plague. And once again, we do see that yellow apple and the tablet. So one extra pool of corrupt out there in the wild. And 30 seconds longer of the corrupt purge in the hands of Varsity, the Vomit Mommy Plague. And looks like they did get the infection on that generator. And we once again do see a totem out in the wild. It is quite surprising with uh, the, the lack of deadlock. We're seeing a whole lot more totems, to say the least. Which, honestly, I really like. It's nice seeing totems again. At the same time, I'm surprised we're not seeing a lot of people using scourge hooks in some way, shape, or form. As it is a lot of good passive gen regression. Though maybe they think that these maps here are not conducive to the scourge hookinins. But right now, Varsity on the prowl for these survivors. But not getting as lucky as Running Man last match. And currently unable to find them. Even going as far as to vomit on the lockers to check for the Wayward Survivor 
Titan, I would be surprised, to say the least, if that were the case. But uh, these fires doing a great job hiding out this corrupt invention, hiding out the plague, not tempted by the active generators being vomited on. And I get a feeling that they're going to wait out the full two minutes and really, you know, drive the message home that they do not care for the plague strategy. With only less than 30 seconds left of this corrupt invention, I feel like this plague is going to be in dire straits soon if these survivors are not found. Once again, checking, going through and checking all their active gens. Have not checked that back right gen in quite some time. There's a possibility that this virus might be there. But uh, the plague not going to heed it any mind. Kind of taking a look around. And potentially even trying to scout out what their three gens is going to be. Going back and checking their totem here. And with only one totem, I mean, it can only be one of two things, right? A Ruin or Devour Hope. There's no way it's anything else. Never in a million years would I think it'd be anything else other than those two. Let's be real here. But Plague now go on checking this gen. And sure enough, it is as dead as a door now. However, Carth Invention is now over. And there's a whole lot more gens for you to protect, Plague. So the survivors did a fantastic job without that corrupt invention. And looks like at this point they are going to be sitting on the gens and finding out about the totem soon enough. So far, no sign of any active totems in play, even going so far as to check the basement for survivors finding absolutely nothing the immersion on this match is over the top but we finally see our first survivor and a skill check miss on the gen unfortunately though we have found the totem i'd imagine the plague now has her first chase and we do see that the totem is hex ruin Blake here now in chase with the Scuba Steve. Getting their first infection will drop chase. And we do see that Kate is also now infected as well. I think they may have touched this generator here, and so they have. And Plague now going for the chase on the Kate. And we trying to get them broken and then down them, but not able to make it happen at the pallet. Kate getting some good distance here. And trying to get away from that tile before they get broken and trying to get to the shack. They're broken, however, and need a bit of distance here to get to the pallet. And they will get to it in time. No stun for the Kate, but will get the distance that they need. And we do hear the first generator popping off with Kate being broken. However, these survivors are now keenly aware of Fanatophobia. That is currently going to be slowing them down by 5%. We do hear Ruin, Ruin get popped off in the distance. Ace gets infected. Scuba Steve gets broken. And now all four survivors are infected as of this moment. So good stuff there for the play, to say the least. With that pallet there, Steve does not have to worry too much and will drop off. The question is whether or not they're able to get away from this tile. And unfortunately for Scuba Steve, it looks like the answer is no. However, I want to point out here that Two gens have been completed. Ruin already gone pretty quickly here before the first hook. So really good job here by Cerebral Assassins. And we will get a hook here on the Scuba Steve. Given the fact that we did see Ace come in, potentially for a body block on... Uh on Kate, I get a slight feeling that maybe the Kate is a deliverance. Now, Varsity here going for the Corrupt Pool and will have the Corrupt Purge in hand. Maybe pulling a similar play that Running Man did, trying to protect their unhook in this back corner. As you do see these two gens relatively close together. So I'll have to wait and see if they are going to try and hold this. But we see once again a very loose three gen. Uh, we see that one near Meat Tree, and then a two here. It's not great, it's not horrible, but it's not as tight as you might want it to be, and there's a lot of ways to block line of sight. So I think if these survivors play smart, they could definitely be able to get break up this three gen in some way, shape, or form. But we even start to see these survivors start to cleanse as they have popped off another gen and only two gens remain. We see that one in the back corner and Scuba Steve will move to second stage. And we see the Fang Min fully healthy and trying to come in for the unhook on Scuba Steve. As we mentioned earlier, 
These survivors need to get a three man out in order to secure the win. And unfortunately here, I think Fangman will go down through the hook. And that might spell disaster for Cerebral Assassins, to say the least. As now Varsity is going to camp Scuba Steve out to death. Going to vomit on Poofy real quick in order to get them infected. The only saving grace here would be if an instance that have a Unbreakable at their disposal. With only 30 seconds left on Scuba Steve, I don't know if they're going to be able to make it without a Kindred. And there's the unhook attempt with Unbreakable. But unfortunately, Varsity being privy to that idea and will get the grab, securing the kill on Scuba Steve. So really good heads up play there by Varsity, Varsity to say the least. And now this puts these uh, survivors into a really awkward position as they need to secure the 3k and Varsity here understands they at the very most need to secure the 2k for the tie. So I think if they are able to do just that or hook one of these two last survivors, whether it be the Ace or the Kate, then that would spell the end for Cerebral Assassins as we are now taking a chase around the shack. And Varsity trying to keep an eye out there for the Kate, trying to protect their hook. I definitely respect the idea, but looks like they are going to take a dry kick on the gen instead and get a little bit caught up on that uh, tile there. And Kate is now broken and will need to cleanse before going for the unhook. Kind of looking back at what it will probably be the the moment or the play of the game here for this match. If only the Fangman had waited a little bit longer for that Corrupt Purge to end, I think we'd be looking at a completely different scenario. But unfortunately for Super Assassins, they were not able to make it happen. And we are going to see a pr uh, pressure to second stage here on the hill. And honestly, these fires are on a world of hurt as Varsity here is going to be able to see the entire area as Poofy now is on second stage and looks like Varsity will be going for the ace at the Shack trying to do a cheeky little mind game here. But looks like the ace undeterred and Poofy still on hook. Kate has yet to go for the unhook and Varsity getting a little bit mind game there will lose some distance on the Shack window and taking another peek at the hill hook i mean this is a great hook for varsity to say the least let's be able to take a look at it while in chase but now dropping it entirely as we do hear another gen pop off and only about 15 seconds left on poofy and ace caught out a little bit but with a pallet still here will get the drop and get the distance to boot so Shrebal assassins Shrebal assassins not out yet they're not out of the game yet to say the least as right now they do have the possibility of still getting a three man out here. Only time will tell if it will be enough as we're currently 22 to 18. But with Poofy getting down again with the corrupt purge. Unless there is a soul guard unbreakable and or a decisive strike. That might be the game as we now see the plague in chase with the ace. And with them being broken and corrupt purge with still another 45 seconds remaining. This survivor is in a world of hurt unless they're able to stun out the plague. And does not look like they're going for it just yet. No one has touched a exit gate. And there's a stun attempt. Ace with the dead heart to avoid the corrupt purge. But will it be enough? And it will not. At this point, all Varsity needs to do is camp to death here on the ace, and I believe that will be the game. So good stuff here from Varsity, to say the least. Played this really, really well, fully understanding the circumstances that they're in. Both survivors cleansing now to try and either get the exit gates open or maybe even the unhook on the ace. However... There was a little bit of a surprise in store as No Way Out has activated. And these survivors are going to have 45 seconds until they're able to open the exit gate. Giving Varsity here all the time in the world to move that one guy D, the ace, into second stage. So overall, amazing, amazing play here with another 45 seconds of their own on the corrupt purge that they picked up here. 
That one guy D is almost guaranteed to move the second stage. No way out with just about another, what, seven, eight seconds left. So we're going to see Corruption, uh, no way out as well as second stage, probably side by side. And sure enough, there we go on the progression of second stage. And no way out has officially ended. The soak being next to the second exit gate means that they only have one way to get out. But Varsity here looks like they're going to be securing the kill on that one guy D. And if they do so, as I mentioned, it is going to spell victory for luxury. And looks like with the opening of the X gate, unless these survivors come in and make the attempt, Corrupt Purge is now over. I think the plague might be doing a bit too early of a celebration as we do see the attempted infection on Poofy, the infection attempt on Kate. The question is whether or not they're gonna have enough distance in order to get away and unfortunately, no way. They got the body block, but here's the ace. Does he have the decisive strike? If he has the decisive strike, that could be the play here. It would secure the three man out. All he needs to do is crawl out within 60 seconds. Would this get the win or has there been too many hook states? That's the question. That is the question of the day. There's only been seven hooks. Only seven hooks. And no decisive. That is heartbreaking. It is either that they missed a decisive strike, which we'll find out at the end here, or there was no decisive at all. If there was, that very possibly could have resulted in the win for Cerebral Assassins. But unfortunately, we will not know as that one guy D, unfortunately, there was no decisive. It was in fact Poofy who had the decisive strike and unbreakable to boot. But with that being said, amazing, amazing match there by both sides. GG's well played to both, and congratulations to Luxury for your first win in round number one. We'll be moving on to round number two here in just a moment. And uh, if you guys aren't aware, we'll be jumping right on in if everything is all set and ready to go. If not, however... We will be starting up at 1 p.m. CST, so definitely make sure to stop or stick on by while we run a quick ad break once again. Though, as a reminder, we are partnered with Stream for a Cause, a nonprofit organization based here in the United States, supporting all sorts of causes from everything going on in Texas to the Ukraine war and so much more. It would really mean a lot if you guys could donate to Champions for a Cause, our charity and team that is currently signed up through them. It would really, really mean a lot. Even $1 goes a whole long way, especially as the amount that you guys donate does impact Champions of Champions in December, which the winners of every season will be invited to. We can't say what the prize pool will be just yet, but if we do get the donation amount up high, who knows, it might be some spicy, spicy numbers. With that being said, guys, we are going to be right back with more matches of Dead by Daylight here in just a moment. But for now, we're going to run a quick three-minute ad. As a reminder, we do not have a sponsor here, so you watching the ads donating bits subscriptions and everything else goes a whole long way so do appreciate it and we'll see you in just a bit <laughs> 